All right, in this video, we'll begin to look at Chapter 4, Section 3, Writing Equations of Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. The first thing we need to be able to do is either given a set of graphs or given some a pairs of points or given equations to determine whether any of the lines are parallel or perpendicular. How do we know when lines are parallel? Well, parallel lines have the same slope. And you can tell from examples, I don't think in this particular graph, that we actually have parallel lines. Um, but uh, you can calculate the slopes from graphs and see that when two lines are parallel, their slopes will be the same. So second thing, perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite in their sign and reciprocals of one another. So if we were to look at this graph, we'll call, we'll work with the blue line first. The blue line, its slope is up one, two, three, over two. So m is equal to positive three over two. The green line is up one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, three. So the green line has a slope of five over three. And both of those are positive slopes. The red line has a slope that is down 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 2 over 4 is a slope of negative 1 half. And we can see that none of these slopes are the same. So none are parallel and none are perpendicular. So uh, the red line has a negative slope, so it is opposite sign from the others, but it's not a reciprocal of either of those other two. So what we need to do in this case is to find the slopes and then compare them. If they're the same, they're parallel. If they are opposite signs and reciprocals of one another, then they're going to be perpendicular. So in the case of problem 16, here we have um, some lines that are given to us in point form. We have two points. So first, we're going to need to calculate the slopes. So we'll still do the first one as a blue line. So m is equal to y2, which is 13, minus y1, which is 10, over x2, which is 4, minus 2, and we get 3 over 2 for the slope of the first line. For the second line, which we'll do in green, we have m is equal to y2, which is 12, minus y1, which is 9, over x2, which is 6, minus 4, uh, x1, which is 4. And so we get 12 minus 9, which is 3, 6 minus 4, which is 2. And we can see then that a and b are parallel. So a be parallel. All right, let's go on to line C, which we'll write in red. M is equal to y2, 9, minus y1, 10, over x2, 4, minus x1, 2, and we get a slope of negative 1 half. And from this, we can see that's all that we have. In this case, only lines A and B are parallel, and no lines are perpendicular. So first, we were given graphs, and we found the slopes from the graphs and compared them. Second, we were given pairs of points, and we found the slopes from the pairs of points and then compared them. Now, here we're given equations of lines, so we're going to have to find the slopes of the lines from the equations and then compare them. Unfortunately, not all of them are already in slope intercept form, so we can't tell the slopes just by looking at them. We'll do line A in blue. 4x minus 3y is 2. We need to subtract 4x from both sides. When we do, we get negative 3y is negative 4x plus 2 dividing by negative 3 Dividing by negative 3, we'll get y is equal to 4 thirds x minus 2 thirds. What I want to do is clearly state 
what its slope is. That's what I want to compare with the other equations. The second equation, we'll call that the green line. We have already, that's fine, it's already in slope intercept form. Y is 4 thirds x plus 2. Y is 4 thirds x plus 2. We know that m is equal to 4 thirds. Therefore, we are going to be able to see that lines A and B are parallel. The red line, we start with 4 y plus 3x is equal to 4. Going to subtract 3x. Remember, we want to get the y by itself. So we have 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 4, dividing everything by 4. I end up with y is equal to negative 3 fourths x plus 1. The slope is negative 3 fourths. Well, we can see now that line C is going to be perpendicular to A and B, and uh, lines A and B are parallel. So A, B, parallel, and C is perpendicular. C is perpendicular to both A and B. All right. So whether we're given graphs, we're given pairs of points, we're given equations, we need to determine what the slope of each graph, pair of points, equation is. Compare it to others. If they're the same, they're parallel. If they are opposite signs and reciprocals, then they will be perpendicular. Go on to more. All right, the next thing we need to be able to do then is if we're given an original line that we want to, f and some point that is parallel to that line, we want to find the equation of the new line. So again, I don't want to uh, belabor this point. You don't have to do this, but I want to show you what this means if we have a graph that is uh, y equals 2x plus 2, that means it has a slope, I mean, it has a y-intercept of positive 2 and a slope of 2, which means that it's going to look something like this line here. Now, if we had another point that's not on that line, that when x is equal to negative 1, y would be equal to 3. That would be somewhere over here. If we're looking for the line that passes through that point, that is going to be parallel to the original line, the blue line, how can we find that line's equation? Well, one thing we know is that by looking at this, that the slope of our lines both have to be 2 since they're parallel. And then they're going to pass through the line to the point x negative 1, 3, which is our x1, y1. We put it into point slope form, y minus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus negative 1, or x plus 1 in this case. Multiplying out, we get y minus 3 is 2x plus 2. Adding 3 to both sides, we get y is going to equal 2x plus 5. And we can see that from our graph, that looks about right. We started at 2, 3, 4, 5. Our line is going to cross the y-axis somewhere around 5, and that makes sense. All right, same thing for uh, perpendicular lines. We have some line, and we're given a point that's not on the line that we want to create a new line that passes through that point perpendicular to the original line. Well. What is the slope of the original line? The slope of the original line is 1 half. So if we call that the slope of the old, the old slope is that, then the new slope will have to be, to be perpendicular to that, will have to be opposite and reciprocal. So it's going to be negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. Again, we have a point. 7 comma 10, we have a slope, 
we can calculate or create a new line y minus 10 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 7. Distributing y minus 10 is negative 2x plus 14. Adding 10, we get y is equal to negative 2x plus 28. And that's going to be our new equation that's perpendicular to the line 1 half x minus 9 and passes through the point 7 comma 2. How do we know that it's perpendicular? Because the slope is opposite and reciprocal. How do we know it passes through 7, 10? Well, if we plug in x equals 7, we get, I did make a mistake. And unless I checked, I wouldn't have found that mistake. When I plug in x equals 7, I get negative 2 times 7, which is negative 14 plus 28 should give me a positive 14, but I'm looking for a 10, and I can see that my mistake is I didn't add correctly. I should have gotten negative 2x plus 24. Now, when I plug in x equals 7, I get negative 2 times 7, negative 14, plus 24 equals 10, and that checks. Let's check the one above as well. We had y equals 2x plus 5. When I plug in x is negative 1, I get 2 times negative 1. Negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3, and that one checks. So always check your work. All right, next. All right, so let's look at a word problem related to this. Um, a Parks and Recreation Department is constructing a new bike path. The path will be parallel to the railroad track shown and pass through the parking lot, parking area at the point 4 comma 5. So we want to be parallel to the original line and the only point that we have on there is 11 comma 4. However, looking for other good points, it appears that we also have a point up here and a point down there. So we need to make sure that we have the same slope between those to make sure that those are actually the good points. So we go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. So it appears that we have a slope of 4 over 3. Let's go up from 11, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. And so that is our slope. And we want to pass through. So we could actually use the slope to find some more points for passing through 4 comma 5. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. So it looks like we would have that. And then we can go down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3 or left 3. And so it appears that that is the line that we are looking for there. Let's put it all together. We know that our slope is 4 over 3. So y put it into point slope form, y minus our new y coordinate, y minus 5, is equal to 4 over 3 times x minus 4. And we end up with y minus 5 is 4 thirds x minus 16 over 3. We would add 5 to both sides. Now you could do this on your calculator. But 5 is the same as 15 over 3. So we would add 15 over 3 instead of 5. And we would get y is equal to 4 thirds x plus 1 third. So you can see that the y-intercept is going to be somewhere down around the origin there. And we have calculated it to be at about 1 third. So my line was not that straight, but uh, it certainly checks to make sure this is good. All right, if I wanted to, I could plug in. Again, I know that I'm parallel because I have the same slope as the original. If I plugged in y is equal to 5, I mean, sorry, x is equal to 4, I'd get 16 thirds. Oops, here I go, another problem there. Negative 16 thirds plus 15 thirds should be a negative one-third and so that's even better according to my graph there all right that's going to do it for this video always